so that all came home. You know, we can understand this in Ottawa because, you know, how many of you were born and raised in Ottawa? One, two. Okay, I'm still on. Oh, I don't even need to get my toes on that one. So you understand, most of us, I'm not sliding out of one. You come somewhere, you work, you settle down, you have your family, you, you, put, the, you put your roots down. My wife constantly tells me it takes five years to settle in a place and, put, and begin to put roots down. How many of you who are not from Ottawa have been here more than five years? Okay, those of you who are not retired, are you going to retire here? Are you going to go back to Winnipeg, baby? Nope. When they get the hockey team, you'll go back. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be so sweet to see Beth and eat crow. I'm just waiting for that day. I used to go to Winnipeg Jazz games on Sunday night. We'd sneak out on the Sunday night service just before the sermon. Roar down to the old Winnipeg Stadium, walk up, and get seats anywhere in the place that never sold out. So Dale Howard Chuck and his prime was fantastic. Anyway, how many of you are going to retire and settle down for? Thank you, Sean. See, it doesn't matter. We've got family back wherever. Southern Ontario, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Quebec. But your roots, you put your roots down here and your family's going to grow here. That's what those. The Jews that were back there said, you know what, my family's on here. I'm doing well, I'm planning, I'm going to stay here. That's why there are Jews back in those kingdoms. Like Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia were now focused in on Israel and west. Up through Turkey, Asia, and the Bible is Turkey today. They go west. The Jews have spread all over. Is there a circle? <laughs> Sorry, Libya and Cyrene. The Jewish populations we represent here are significant numbers. Let me tell you. Egypt alone had an estimated one million Jewish inhabitants by the dawn of the Christian era. There was constant movement back and forth. It was too easy. It's all part of the fertile crescent. A million. In Rome, it's estimated there were between 40 and 60,000 Jews living in Rome at the dawn of the Christian era. We know through records there were at least 11 ancient synagogues. We haven't found them yet in archaeology, maybe they're buried under something important. But we know there were at least 11 synagogues in Rome. And it was Rome where the greatest amount of Jewish proselytization happened. They were quite zealous to convert people to Judaism. Where are you getting these numbers, Noakes? I get them from Philo and Josephus. Philo was an Alexandrian Jew. How many Jews were in Egypt? We just said close to a million. Josephus, he wrote histories of the Jewish people for the emperors in Rome. So we got a guy from Rome, and we got a guy from Egypt, both Jews, they're giving us these numbers. This is contemporary. These are guys who lived at the time. They wrote it. Rome. There's even distinct Jewish catacombs in Rome. We always think of the Christian catacombs. There's distinct Jewish catacombs in Rome as well. There was even more evidence. God fearers and converts. What's the difference between a God fearer and a convert to Judaism? Gentlemen, let's let's talk a minute. Put on the rubber glove. A convert has gone through the entire initiation process to become a Jew. That gives a little flint knife in action. A God fearer is one who's gone to that point and said, I'm just going to fear God from over here. It's a painful thing, apparently. I don't remember. But they're there. So these are the folks that come from literally all around the known world. And they're in Jerusalem. On this day, Greetings and Arabs. Arabia then was just, Arabia just came up the east side of, of Israel. It's not like Saudi Arabia today. I heard a thing on the news the other day. Saudi Arabia is only called Saudi Arabia because the Saudi royal family rules it. Otherwise, it's just Arabia. It's Saudi Arabia because the Saudi family are the ruling family. So that's Arabia. Arabia then came right up to the east side. They're everywhere. The Jewish population is everywhere. In fact, the capital of Arabia in the 
the time was known as the Nabataean Kingdom. The capital city was Petra. You've probably all heard of Petra. It's in the Kingdom of Jordan. You've probably seen that these cities that are carved, that one particular facade carved out of the face of the rock. That's Petra. That was the capital. And they were quite close with Israel. The guy who was the ruler at the time, Eretus, was, was the man who was the ruler. He ruled from 9 BC to 40 AD. One of his daughters was the first wife of Herod Antipas, who was divorced by Herod to marry Herodias. Plug in the story of John the Baptist. And you're in the right time zone. What happened to John for saying, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad? Uh, he eventually showed up. But you know what? You, you might kill him, but you can't put silence. So, literally, we have Jews from everywhere around the known world. All the Jews <coughs> are here. In Jerusalem, they hear it. We hear them declare the ones of God in our tongues. Amazed, yes, perplexed, probably, they ask one of them, what does this mean? Let's ask ourselves, what does it mean? It's the day of Pentecost, Feast of Weeks, Jews are all there. Jesus had said to his disciples, you know what? You will be my witnesses. In Jerusalem and Judea and to the whole world. So it's through you the gospel will be spread to the whole world. What's God done? He's brought the world to Jerusalem. They are preaching, they are witnessing, and they're all going to go home. And the gospel is going to spread. We don't really know who founded the Christian church in Rome. It wasn't Paul, it wasn't Peter. <coughs> The mission is, folks from the day of Pentecost, visitors from Rome, who heard the gospel, went home and took the good news with them, and we have to tell others. I was friends of church. God said, this is a very purposeful evangelistic scheme on God's part. That's what the day of Pentecost is. And the Holy Spirit said to be empowered that it all to happen. I know a lot of Baptists who are kind of afraid of the Holy Spirit, not sure what to make of it because there's been a lot made of the Holy Spirit in other contexts. And so we sort of shy away from that. But you know what? I'm glad uh, Bobby took us through uh, various scenarios of who and what the Holy Spirit, who He is and what He does. Because it's absolutely integral. It's the third person of, of the Trinity. It's the Holy Spirit who is resident in us as we become believers in Christ. It's the Holy Spirit in the church that focuses us on what is the Holy Spirit in us that helps us to understand Scripture. It's the Holy Spirit in us that speaks to our hearts so we would know the sound, the voice of God and know His will in our lives. Well, the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? Some Joe and the God, they're drunk, they've had too much wine. I'm glad Peter gave him a little, a little quick background. Come on, guys, it's only night in the morning. They haven't time. They didn't have time to do that. But he stands up and raises his voice and addresses them, fellow Jews, all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. And listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. You have to get up early to get a buzz on that. 